In this nugget, we're going to force a topology change and capture the traffic while it happens in a spanning tree environment. Let's begin. One of the benefits of having a fault-tolerant environment is that it can tolerate a fault and continue working. And in our spanning tree topology, we're using this topology that we built in the nugget on spanning tree that's in the course called CCNA Labs Through the Eyes of Wireshark. So using this as a starting point with R1, R2, and R3 all having 16-port switch modules in slot 2, R1 is currently the root for the spanning tree for VLAN 777. So both of its ports are forwarding, so they would be designated and forwarding ports. On R2, this would be the root port, and it would be forwarding. And on R3, this would be the root port, and it would be forwarding. And between R2 and R3, because they both have an equal cost to get to the root of 19, they have to duke it out based on who's going to be the designated switch and have the designated port on this segment between them. And the winner is going to be R2 because R2 has a lower bridge ID. So fast Ethernet 2 slash 4 is going to be a designated port and forwarding. And on R3, its switch port module 2 slash 4 is going to be blocking. So that, my friend, is our starting topology for this discussion. Now I'd like you to imagine with me what would happen on R3 if we shut down the interface 2 slash 3. If R3 loses its root port, it's going to have to take interface 2 slash 4 out of blocking state and eventually move it to forwarding state. It's often a great idea to verify our topology before we start changing things. So here at R1, let's do a show spanning tree for VLAN 777. And because we're on a router with switch ports, we're going to add the keyword of brief at the end to make the output look very much like it would on a catalyst switch. And R1 indeed is the root bridge. And both its ports, 2 slash 2 and 2 slash 3, are both designated ports forwarding traffic. And because R1 is the root, those interfaces indeed are forwarding away from the root. And that's one of the definitions of a designated port, a port that is forwarding in a direction that's away from the root. Let's go over to R2 and just verify the spanning tree for VLAN 777 there as well with a show spanning tree, VLAN 777 brief. And that confirms for us that R2 is forwarding on the trunk up to R1, the trunk over to R3, as well as forwarding out 2 slash 1 to the PC, which is a part of VLAN 777. And interface 2 slash 1 is an access port assigned to VLAN 777. And then we'll go over to R3. And here on R3, let's also do a show spanning tree for VLAN 777 brief, just to verify that R3's 2 slash 3 interface is indeed forwarding, which it is. Also interface 2 slash 3 is R3's root port. And interface 2 slash 4 is indeed blocking. So that'll be our baseline before we begin our topology changes. Next, in GNS3, let's go ahead and start our captures on all three of the links. We'll start the capture between R1 and R2. We'll start the capture between R2 and R3. And we'll start the capture between R1 and R3. Now, back at our console, let's go ahead and just verify that we have basic connectivity across the network. Let's go over to PC number 2. And PC2 has the IP address of 10.0.0.52. We can verify that with a show IP and press enter here in the virtual PC simulator. So let's go ahead and ping 10.0.0.51, which is PC1 on the left-hand side of our network. And it looks like all five pings are successful, and we've captured those pings. The path those pings would have taken would have been from the PC up to R1, over to R2, and then out to PC1. And that, again, is because interface 2 slash 4 on R3 is blocking. So let's mix this up a little bit. We'll go to R3. We'll go to the right terminal for that. So sitting at the console for R3, let's do a debug of spanning-tree events so we can see the events as they happen. In our little teeny lab topology with just two PCs that are just sitting there waiting for something to happen, our topology is going to be pretty stable unless we invoke a change. So let's do exactly that. We're going to go to interface 2 slash 3 on R3 that switch port, and we'll go ahead and shut it down. So what was the root port is now no longer going to be functional. And because the debug's running, we can take a look at the process it's going through. Also, right here on R3, we can do a show spanning tree for VLAN 777 brief, and we can actually see the different states it's going through. And there's another debug message, so I'm going to hit the up arrow key, and we'll issue that command again, and then we can go look at the history of what just happened. The other thing I'd love to do is let's go back to PC2, still while the capture's running, and let's do yet another ping over to 10.0.0.51, 
And this time, because R3's 2 slash 3 interface is completely shut down, it's now using interface 2 slash 4 as its root port to forward traffic. And as a result, the ping from PC2 would have been sent into the switch, the switch would have sent it over to R2, and R2 would have forwarded it up to PC1. And the cool thing is, we have a capture of everything that just occurred. So let's go through the time machine just a little bit and what happened with R3. It had a root port of FA2 slash 3. We shut that interface down, and there's two VLANs being affected. That's the two that exist, VLAN 1 and VLAN 777. We're going to focus our attention regarding VLAN 777. When we shut down that port, FA2 slash 3, from a spanning tree perspective, because we have the command debug spanning dash tree events running, R3 said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and immediately put that shutdown port in blocking state. There's no way I can forward on it. So effectively, from a spanning tree perspective, interface 2 slash 3 is out of the picture. And then immediately, it's already identified its new root port, which is 2 slash 4, and it has a cost of 38. Now, how did it get that cost? Well, the answer is R1, when it advertised the BPU straight from the root, it advertised a cost of 0. R2, hearing that BPDU on its FA2 slash 2 interface, has a local cost of 19. And so what R2 did, it added 0 plus 19 to get its overall cost to get to the root. And now as R2 is advertising BPDUs over to R3, the advertised cost is now 19. And R3 knows that its FA2 slash 4 interface has a cost of 19 also. So it's the advertised cost plus the local interface cost equals a whopping 38. And that, my friend, is exactly how R3 knows about what the cost is using interface 2 slash 4 as a root port. But notice, it doesn't just say, hey, great, let's start forwarding. It's actually going through some states. The first state is the listening state. Now, with other protocols such as rapid spanning tree, we can go to forwarding much more quickly. But with traditional spanning tree, we are indeed going through these waiting processes. So listening happens for 15 seconds by default with traditional spanning tree. It's also indicating that R3 has sent a topology change notification on interface 2 slash 4. So that isn't transit traffic. It's not forwarding users traffic yet, but it is sending a notification regarding there has been a topology change. And it's forwarding that out of its root port. So if we scroll down a little bit further, we next have a little collision about two things that happened at the same time. I was issuing the command show spanning tree for VLAN 77 brief. And also, just before that, we had a debug message indicating that we are now transitioning into the learning state. So we were in listening, now we're going to learning, and the learning state also is going to last for 15 seconds by default with spanning tree. So listening waited for 15 seconds, then learning for 15 seconds, and now the output of show spanning tree for VLAN 777 indicates that, yes, indeed, here on port 2 slash 4 of R3, we are in a learning state. And then as we scroll down a little bit further in the output of R3, we have yet another message that indicates that we've transitioned from the learning state into a forwarding state. And the debug is also revealing that we've sent a topology change notification as well. And we are now forwarding on that interface. So now if we scroll down to the final output of show spanning tree for VLAN 777 brief, we can see that interface 2 slash 4 is now in a forwarding state. And the cool thing is, anything that happened, anything that was sent over the wire, we have as part of our captures because we are running active captures on each of the trunks in our topology. So we have the captures on each of the links. They are titled R1 to R2, R2 to R3, and R1 to R3. And literally, there are hours of content that we could go through in these captures. And I invite you to investigate and explore each and every one of them. And what we would learn from them is that the initial ping before we took out the root port in R3 would have gone this path. We'll call it path A. And then after we disabled interface 2 slash 3, the topology changed and then the subsequent pings from PC2 would have taken path B. So together, let's take a look at the capture of the traffic on the link between R2 and R3. So if we go to the beginning of this capture and then select packet number 3. Again, this is the capture between R2 and R3. Here we have a per VLAN spanning tree BPDU. In the 802.1Q header, it indicates it's for VLAN 777. And in the spanning tree payload, if we expand that, it indicates the root cost path is 19. That is R2, and the BPDU is being sent over in the direction of R3, advertising that the cost to get to the root is 19. It's also communicating what the forward delay is. And that forwarding delay is set by the root and propagated through the STP domain. And that forwarding delay also controls what the listening and learning states are going to be, how long they're going to be, 
for devices that are part of Spanning Tree. And that's why R3, when it went through listening and learning, waited 15 seconds for listening, 15 seconds for learning before it went to forwarding. And if we look at packet 275, this is a topology change notification for VLAN 777. And if you look at the source MAC address, that source MAC address is the source MAC address of R3 on its FA2 slash 4 interface. And the topology change notification is sent in the direction of the route to alert the route that there has been some change. And as those messages are forwarded in the direction of the route, that could trigger the route to go ahead and send some messages itself to tell the other switches that they can start flushing MAC addresses faster than they normally would. We can save the balance of that discussion for the CCNP for switching. And then as we continue to scroll down, if we take a look at packet 359, we have an ARP request. This is PC2 asking for the layer two address of PC1. In packet 360, we have the reply. And you'll notice because we're capturing this over the trunk link, we've got an 802.1Q tag of 777, which is the VLAN that those two PCs are a part of. And then in packet 361, we begin our pings. And again, those are now being seen on the link between R2 and R3 because those ports are all forwarding as part of the new spanning tree topology. In this nugget, we started off with a basic spanning tree topology. We verified it with the correct show commands. We started captures on all the trunk links. We shut down the root port on R3, looked at the results via debug, as well as the results via the capture files we created during this nugget. And the three capture files that we saved are all available to you as part of the Nugget Lab files. I have had a great time in this nugget. I'm so glad you joined me for it. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.